Hey, hey, what's going on, y'all? It's Icon once again, just coming off the NXT TakeOver Phoenix. Uh, good show, good show. Um, you know, it actually, um, I'm kind of shocked because it started at 7 o'clock. Usually these things start at 8 o'clock, and they last for about um, two and a half hours. This one started at 7, and it finished about five minutes ago. So about 9.40, 9.35, 9.40. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let, let's get right into it. Because, you know, we got a lot to do. This is a Royal Rumble weekend. Um, right out the gate, as soon as the show started, it opened up with the tag team title match, the War Raiders versus Undisputed Era. Um, no Adam Cole when, when Undisputed Era came out. Special Riley and Strong. And there was no Adam Cole, so there was no Adam Cole Bay Bay chant in the uh, in the crowd tonight. They uh, the War Raiders came out. They had um, a nice little Viking entrance, and you know originally I had picked the the Undisputed Era to to retain the titles, but once I saw the War Raiders entrance, I was like, well, damn, if we're gonna do this, <laughs> like if we're gonna give them this whole elaborated, you know, long, you know, like over exaggerated entrance, I was like, well, they have to win now. And it was a it was a good match. It was very, you know, Roderick Strong, like he he earned the last name Strong in this match because, um, you know. Undisputed Era, like, Roderick Strong, Kyle Riley, these are grown-ass men, like, they're grown adults, and, you know, full, full flushed-out adults, but compared to the War Raiders, they look like, they, you know, they, they look like little people, you know, they look like small, they look like junior high school children, and Roderick Strong still had the strength, there were numerous times where he picked both of them up, you know, with, um, you know, with one arm and put him in a backbreaker, um, doing suplexes and things like that, and it was, uh, it was very surprising, because, like, I didn't, I didn't think Strong had it in him, <laughs> you know, so he was definitely, um, he was the MVP of, uh, of that team, but it was a good hard-hitting, a hard-hitting match, the, the War Raiders, they worked good together, you know, the crowd popped when, um, I forget which one, I forget which one the really, really big one is, I think, I think that's Ro, um, you know, he did this one, this one spot where, you know, he, he, he did like a Herakurana almost, not, not a Herakurana, it was, um, it was a, it was like, he was in the corner, and then he had his legs on top of, um, I think it was on top of strong shoulders, and then he sat on his chest, and then O'Reilly tried to come in with the sneak attack, and he did the cartwheel, he did a cartwheel out of the corner to avoid it, and the crowd went crazy, because, you know, it's a big dude moving, moving, you know, moving fast like lightning, and, you know, and just like what everybody thought, you know, after they had that that nice match, you know, the the four on four, the War Games match. After they had the War Games match, uh, the War Raiders got injured in that match, legitimately injured in that match, but they bounced back, and the War Raiders are your new NXT Tag Team Champions. So, with um, with no Adam Cole, and with the belts now off of the Undisputed Era, uh, the question remains now: Do they get called up? How many of them show up tomorrow in the Royal Rumble? Um, is the entire group headed to the main roster? We shall see. Uh, after that, they did Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ohno. Uh, nothing really to say here. Everybody knew Matt Riddle was going to win. There was no surprise that Matt Riddle won. There was nothing about the match that was a surprise. The only thing that was pretty funny was towards the end of the, like, uh, the finish of the match was Matt Riddle mounted, um, Cassius Ono, he basically just kept giving him forearm shots, and then Cassius Ono tapped out, like, a biatch to a, to a bunch of forearm shots, and I'm like, we see people get mounted and get pounded with forearms all the time, and I was like, you tapping out, so I'm like, all right, whatever, but I said, nobody, you know, there's not a single person on the planet that thought he was gonna win anyway, so, uh, nothing, like I said, nothing, nothing there, and we'll see, um, you know what they do with Matt Riddle going uh, going forward. Uh, after that, they did the uh, the match of the night. Um, you know the the match that stole the show, the match of the night, um, whatever you want to call it. Ricochet versus Johnny Gargano. Uh, you know the the Rebel Heart versus the One and Only, and it was in it was in full effect because uh, the reversals, the counters, the flips, the crosses, the strikes. You know, like these guys were all over the place. They were they countered every. It's like you would think you would think these two have been working together on their wrestling for the last like 20 30 years like they were so in sync and you know the crowd was the crowd was loving it like I was loving it you know everybody was loving it you know people were texting me about it you know the the, the it, it was heart pounding you know you, you, you were on the edge of your seat and you were jumping up and then you're like oh he got him but like no he kicked out of it and you know he flipped out of this and then the first exchange they just had like a good like two minute reversal exchange <laughs> you know and that was enough just to set the tone of the you know of the whole match Johnny Gargano he 
actually won the NXT award for match of the year with um him and Andrade Cien Almas and Selena Vega came out and basically um got in his ass and told him that you know he ain't shit and although he you know him and Andrade won you know got the got the trophy Andrade was the one who won the match and he moved on to big things and Johnny's still you know he's still wrestling in parking lots and you know but um Johnny proved himself tonight I mean he he ended up cheating towards the end he took the uh, he took the padding off the floor exposing the concrete you know, just like he, uh, like, you know, like him and Champa always do in their matches, and he, uh, you know, he actually, he put, um, he, su- I believe it was a, a Brain Buster suplex, he put, um, Ricochet, you know, through the, uh, through the concrete, he, you know, he caught him, caught him on the concrete, got him in the ring, did a springboard DDT, put him out, and, uh, Johnny Gargano is the new champion of North America, um, which is interesting, because, you know, a guy like Ricochet, you know, guys like EC3, even Adam Cole, you know, the plan, I don't think the plan was ever for them to stay in NXT for, you know, for a year. Like, EC3 wasn't supposed to be there as long as he did, and he got the call up, and I don't think Ricochet was supposed to be there that long either, so um, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if Ricochet shows up tomorrow in the Royal Rumble, but we'll see if he gets a rematch or not, but it's uh, it's the Johnny Gargano show now because he is the new champion. Uh, after that, we had the women's match which, uh, the undefeated Bianca Belair versus Shayna Baszler, and, you know, I picked Bianca Belair to win because, you know, Shayna Baszler's a two-time champion, and, you know, like, if you're on NXT, it's like, how long do two-time champions stick around, so I figured Shayna Baszler would be getting the call-up anytime soon, but, you know, she'd be getting the call-up pretty soon, but it didn't happen, uh, Shayna Baszler, she ended up winning the match, but not without the shenanigans among us, because, uh, you know, if anything, you know, Ricochet and Johnny may have got the match of the night, but Bianca Belair definitely gets, like, the heart and soul of the night, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, she fought through about two or three um, rear naked chokeholds, and, you know, she, even you know, it got to the point where, like, she was the Rocky story of the night, because there was one point where, when she got put in the first rear naked choke, everybody assumed it was over, but then when she powered out of it, and not only did she power out of it, she ended up turning the, the the rear naked choke into a suplex, and then at that point, she basically just won the crowd over, like the crowd was pulling for her, and then when she got put in the second one, you know, the crowd was on their feet, and they were, you know, they were rooting for her to get out of it, get out of it, and then obviously, you know, like the the, 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 the cheating had to, you know, had to start because, you know, Jessamyn Duke and uh, Maria Schaffer showed up, and, you know, Bianca had to fight them off, and then, you know, between, you know, between the interference, and the referee got knocked down, and then, you know, Bianca got the pin, you know, and then there was nobody to count it so they basically cheated my girl tonight but it's, it's all gravy because she gonna get her rematch and she she won the fans over tonight so she actually she you know she has the fans respect which means that when she finally does get her rematch um the entire universe will be behind her but something has to be done about the outside interference like she needed to get some help but she's not the most uh well-liked person on nxt so we'll see we'll see what happens she may just have to overcome the odds there was the one spot where she did use the hair you know she did um whoop Shayna with the hair one good time and bianca had like you know rhinestones or like designs or hair pins or whatever that spelled out est um on her braid and there was a spot where Shayna. You know, Shannon was walking towards her, and Bianca whooped her in the stomach with um with her hair. And you heard that crack like that, like sound like a gunshot went off. And then, you know, the cameraman got a close up, and then you saw Shayna actually had like a like a cut gash like on on the side of her ribs. And I don't obviously I don't think that was because of the hair. I think the gash was because she probably got hit with all that damn glitter, that Bianca, like all those all those pins and stuff that Bianca had on on her um on her braid. So. Uh, Shayna definitely, you know, she, you know, I don't think she'll need stitches, it just looked like a small cut, but, you know, but she opened her up, so, but you can't, um, fan that you gotta put respect on that girl's name, because she came to fight, and, you know, I really hope, um, you know, I hope she, you know, when WrestleMania time comes around, I hope she gets another shot, and I hope she, she captures the title, because she deserves it, uh, Velveteen Dream showed up tonight, um, he showed up with a couple of white chicks, and <laughs> he was sitting front row watching the, um, watching the action, he was, like, he did the whole thing where, like, whenever they have, like, an indie star that just signed, and they're supposed to be coming soon, you know, they always have them sit at TakeOver, so, the, like, like, the Dream did that, I'm like, bro, like, you're not a new person, like, you're old, <laughs> but he's supposed to be in that tournament, you know, that 205 Live, um, NXT tournament that they got going on where the winner can challenge um, the champion of their choosing. It's NXT NXT UK in a 205 Live tournament and the winner of the tournament can can choose the champion of their choosing and the Dream said that he was going to be in that match 
and he said that when he wins, he was going to challenge for the NXT title. So I guess he was there to see uh, the Johnny, you know, to see the, um, the, I guess he was there to see the Champa, um, Alistair Black match, uh, which leads to the final match, which was Alistair Black versus the Champ Tommaso Champa, and a uh, good match. You know, um, Champa worked on the knee a lot. No outside interference. Um, Champa did the same thing that Johnny did. He actually, um, you know, took the the padding off the floor to reveal the, um, the concrete. He, you know, Black did um, he did a diving knee on the floor and he banged his knee on the concrete. But you know, the match was the match went pretty back and forth towards the end. But um, eventually, the knee gave out and. He wasn't able to complete the black mask. Champa put him, you know, put him in his finisher, and Tommaso Champa retains the NXT championship. Now, this was pretty interesting because when the match was over, and Champa went to the, uh, he went to the stage, and he was standing at the stage and had the belt held high over his head. Johnny came out with his new North American championship, which got a, D- a DIY chant. The two of them proudly held their titles up high, <laughs> and they, they gave each other the awkward stare. There was no Candice LeRae to come out to tell Johnny, what the hell are you doing? Um, which I thought was pretty interesting, but I guess I guess we'll get more of that on 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 the regular NXT show. Candice will probably be like, you know, after everything he put us through, oh, don't you do this and blah blah blah. So I wouldn't be surprised if both of them team up and go after the War Raiders. But but yeah, but that was it. You got to you know DIY standing tall with the gold, and you know the the show the show went off on that note. Um, we do have well the the dark matches for the show was uh, two of the four horsewomen. Um, so obviously, um, Duke and Shafair versus Kyrie Zane and Io Shirai, and then we had the Street Profits versus um, not the Drifters. What are those guys? Um, the Forgotten Sons. Yeah, the Forgotten Sons versus Street Profits. So um, I would like to have seen that tonight, but we didn't. We didn't get that tonight. We'll get that this uh, this Wednesday on NXT, and you know that's about it. You know, like I said, there wasn't um, there wasn't really a whole lot to say. I mean, the the show went pretty quick. The match quality was awesome, as takeovers usually are. And, you know, despite the fact that I didn't like the outcome of, um, you know, of the women's match, I mean, it was an overall solid show. I mean, I would, I would, I mean, honestly, I would give it, see, you know what, if Bianca would have won the title, I would have gave it a nine, but because she ain't won the title, I'm gonna give the show an eight and a half. Like, if it wasn't for Ricochet and Johnny's match, I would have given it an eight, but Ricochet and, Ricochet and Johnny, uh, they bump it up to eight and a half, but you got to lose a half a point because you, 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 you cheated my homegirl, um, Bianca, so the EST um, deserved that title and she didn't get it. <laughs> uh, but that's it. you know. So we got the um, we got the Royal Rumble coming up tomorrow, so I'm definitely going to try to do um, a, re- a recap for that. I'll be here for all the action. Uh, enjoy this takeover, and I'll enjoy the next one. So take care, everybody. Until next time, as always, I'm out this. Bye.